Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dual Hearts. We've had enough of backtracking for now, so let's do some side questing, some lateral motion. Remember in the last episode we met a woman named Phoebe, or I should say we met her for the second time actually in Hotel, and she talked about to us about her dream of opening an amusement park. Let's go see what that dream actually entails, by visiting it directly. We will be getting 100% completion on this dream within the context of the first 10 minutes of this video. So, let's get started. We've got a model of Sano Island right here. The characters seem surprised to actually find out what the island looks like as a whole, but to be fair, it's only like five or six screens, so you'd think they would know pretty much the entire island front and back by now. Especially since I've gone through the trouble of showing pretty much every area already. Anyway, hello. As I said back when we met her in the first place, this kind of feels like we walk into an episode of Harvest Moon where she wants to sort of tear everything off the island to build an amusement park. But there's no real moral or goal. We're not going to stop her. In fact, there's no real resolution to this plot at all. Again, it's unclear if she can hear Bumble. Like, oh, the game sort of forgets whether or not people can actually talk to him, and whether or not they can do that in real life with a dream. Anyway, let's look at the forest. Apparently we agree with her. She wants to tear down the trees, which means Lillian will be completely alone. Of course a beach is enough. This place is a resort town. It's basically all you go to do. And those ruins? No, don't tear down the ruins. We need those to save the world. It seems rather important right now. Strongly disagree. But let's indulge her and check out the individual attractions that she has dreamed up. The first one we talked about, the Monster Arena. Run, piggy, run. You've chosen to kill the forest. She just whacks the trees right off there, chops them all down with her hand. There's some metaphor here, but... I think the game sort of ignores it. Anyway, this game is basically identical to the sequence in Florence's Dream where we had to battle those spiky enemies by throwing Essamons at them and letting Bumble go to town. Each of these games has four levels, the first of which gets you a Dream Energy, the second and third get you a Tummy Up Fragment, and the fourth gets you a Gold Essamon. There's no real difference between the four, other than the high score you have to get. In this case, for the first level, which is where this cutscene came from, we were only supposed to get ten. But for the highest level, which is the one I'm showing here in the actual gameplay, the threshold is 30. In most of my runs, since the time limit doesn't change, I got about 30. So there's no particular reason to show all four of them. In fact, I'm speeding this one up, obviously, just to make it go a little bit faster, because there's no particular variance in the individual playthroughs. You just sort of run around, pick up the SMLs, and throw them. There's not even any real value in sort of kiting the guys around, because they show up at random points, and you'll probably run into all of them while you're running around just picking up SMLs. Black SMLs, of course, are devastating here because you're not really supposed to be paying that much attention to Bumble at all, and you're supposed to just assume that he's taking care of the enemies for you. It's also kind of bad if you get hit a lot, like I did just there, because filling up your HP off of Bumble's tummy means that he starts sucking up the SMLs before you get a chance to kill them and throw them at the enemies. Also, to sort of make matters worse, the kill doesn't count until the enemy completely disappears, meaning you can get the 30th kill, and if you haven't gone through the whole death animation, you don't actually get credit for the 30th enemy, which has happened to me at least once. But not this time. We get to exactly 30 and then I just run around because I'm bored. For some reason the game gives you attack up items in this level, even though you can't actually attack the enemies and do any damage to them. She gives you that neck try harder next time message no matter what you do as long as you're only a little bit over the threshold which is sort of inevitable for the highest level. And there's our gold vessel on. It's a, little it's a little disheartening, but you know, whatever. We're done with this game. Let's get out of here. Go check out the beach after this. I mean, it was, pretty, it was pretty boring, I have to say. The one time we were there, picking up that one castaway. Maybe it'll be more interesting when we go back in the context of an, of an amusement park. Super Sucker Upper. Boy, I bet Bumble's gonna be excited. It's all about eating Essamon, supposedly. There's no, uh, beach-whacking animation where she knocks, like, the rock in the hut off the beach. I think she actually uses the hut to sit in while, we're, while she watches us play the game. The gist th of this game is that we use the draw card, as she says, and she actually automatically gives it to us out of our inventory. We'll be given a set of- an increasingly long set of isamons that we have to suck up using the draw card. Of course, Bumble is shocked because she, he's not allowed to participate in this game and eat any of the isamons. As we complete each set, all the other SMONs in the area will die, and we'll get a new set, and a new 
sequence to pick up. The first level requires you to pick up three sets. The last one requires you to pick up eight. Eight is quite long, so in order to show the winning run, I've sped this up to quadruple speed, hyper speed, ludicrous speed. If you get a single one wrong, the game ends automatically when you lose, which is pretty rough because all you have to do is lock on to the wrong SMON. As soon as you hit the draw card button, you cannot cancel the animation. So you have this like five seconds of, you know, disgust because you screwed up until the game actually tells you for sure that you did. Also, supposedly all of the SMONs in the sequence are generated within the same area when you get a new set. But since they can actually wander out of the area and stop you from picking them up or being able to lock onto them, it doesn't, it doesn't really work out that conveniently, and like, yeah, like I'm doing here, you usually wind up having to run around all over the place to find what you need. Man, watching this at super speed is, I think, speeding up my narration. I promise you, the narration is at 1x when I've actually recorded it. That's the end of that. They're just hanging out there. Bumble looks so sad he doesn't get to participate. We probably shouldn't be encouraging her. She seems so happy about her amusement park, but, like, I can't really get excited about raising the island like she does. But whatever, it's all in the pursuit of collectibles, so I guess we have to put up with it. So, how was it? Not bad. Why does he think it's fun? He didn't get to do anything. Well, no matter. One last attraction, and then we're done with the stream. Knock the ruins off. Say goodbye. And there wasn't anything important in there, was it? I like how Bumble has a little shocked expression. It's kind of cute. Catch me if you can. What an awful pun. Bumble's just gone totally ADD. He's just running around while we, uh, while we get the rules explained to us. So our goal is to catch the sheep. This is a pretty typical... Uh, catch the guy minigame in video game standards. The sheep will sort of wander around the arena and sort of chase away, chase and run away from you at a speed sort of relative to how fast you're moving. Check out the rings. We're at 70 rings. There were 40 rings in the beach and 30 in the forest area just sort of scattered around the arena that I picked up during the first run. I can show off most of the sheep stream during this first run while we have a time limit of two minutes. The only change in the individual levels of the sheep game is that you get less and less time to do the exact same game every single time. Notice that there are little rocks in addition to the grass on the ground. We passed by one a few seconds ago, and I believe there's another one coming up. So let's uh, get the rings. This gives us 100 for Phoebe's dream. The second dream we've got all 100 rings, and after Parfait's dream. 399 total, which is incredibly aggravating. This is not all those rocks on the right. The goal here is to dash into the sheep. Again, it sort of rebounds away from you at the speed you're running into it in a random direction. You're supposed to stay between, or I should say, herd the sheep between you and the wall, and then dash into it. But since the sheep moves so much faster than you, it can turn on a dime while you can't. It's actually really hard to do this, and it's sort of really frustrating to, attempt to do so. Pick up that dream cake. There will be a cake that shows up randomly to keep your SMLs fill up. What you really want to do is trap the sheep between a rock and yourself, and then just charge into it, because then he can't dash away in the direction of the rock. That's actually the easiest way to do it. He's all upset because he lost. Same dialogue from Bumble. He's not a pig, go figure. Never would have guessed. Anyway, we've picked up absolutely everything from this dream. Except what we get for the final cutscene. As it turns out, there is a small prize, even though there's no moral or resolution. That was it. It was fun. Yeah, well, we rode Bumble like a pony. That's it, we get a draw card, our second, and an HP up fragment, the one HP up fragment that's in every world, for playing every level at least once. And now we're at 100% completion, our second 100% completion dream after Parfaits. Good for us. Let's get out of here and never talk of this place again. I swear, this woman creeps me out. So that's our second side quest dream complete, there are two more. And as you can see on our map, the old man, the guy who kind of acted like Santa Claus, Ho Ho Ho, from Abbas's Cafe, is in room 102. But first, let's see if we can backtrack to Yuri's Dream, and I talked about this a little bit before. We can access more of Yuri's Dream because we can swim and use the bomb, but since Emma's here taking care of Gregor, and she's already falling in love with him pretty clearly, we actually can't enter Yuri's Dream. So let's uh, go do something else. I was actually planning on showing as much backtracking as possible now to keep it from getting out of the way later. Let's go back to the hotel. Now, 
this is daytime, so everybody's awake except for the old man. Like, everybody you need to talk to, he will never go to sleep until you get his cutscene. So let's go into his room and see what he has to say. Let's return his bag to him since we found it on the uh, street outside of Hannah's house. There it is, it just sort of appears out of hammer space. Yep. So yeah, I wasn't actually being sarcastic when I called this guy Santa that one time. He used to wear this a long time ago. Hmm. He was a department store Santa Claus? Apparently Santa Claus exists in this world, which is interesting by itself. Really? You're missing one small material item? Well, we solved Yuri's problem by going into his dream, so... I smell a goal! Remember, he sleeps on the beach. So he's actually ha he actually has to leave his room. Oh, of course, and Bumble now has the ability to, to detect keys. So since we don't have any obvious leads, since we don't know who is close to the ruins anymore, having already investigated Yuri and Florence's dream, let's go check out the old man. We'll go downstairs and talk to Val first, see how she's holding up as the impromptu proprietor of his inn. And here's that guy. I don't know where... I don't know, she's moping around again? What are they looking at? Okay, oh, it was Chiffon the whole time. The cameraman was obviously asleep. I'm surprised we didn't even see the boom mic in this shot. Check out this guy. Mr. Exposition. I love how they brought in a new character specifically just to talk about Chiffon. Apparently she's a diva of some kind. Let's go say hi to Val. I mean, Nancy. She asked us for a room. Remember she was all full up on rooms and she was pretending to be the secretary in her first scene, she seems shocked that we would ask about the guests. Not that, we are, not that she doesn't already know that we've been in all of their rooms. And of course she just surrenders the information to us anyway. She's not actually, you know, a secretary, so there's no reason to believe she'd be good at her job. She just tells us the old man is in room 102, because he's the one we're supposed to be investigating, so the game's sort of giving us a hint. The rest is just stuff we knew already. All these people we've already visited, except for Emma, who we know is in the tent with Yuri. Let's go to the beach and talk to the old man. Thankfully, this hall closet is warped directly to the beach. That's a complete lie. But it doesn't matter, because here we are at the beach. Honestly, the game kind of makes it unclear if the old man is actually supposed to be Santa Claus or just some kind of old hobo who thinks he's Santa Claus. Which is really weird, especially since he's sleeping right here, sort of on the veranda at the beach. Of course, Stompy Lampshade's this. Bumble is off camera insisting about the key, and of course I got fooled again by the yes-no being opposed anytime you enter a dream. But so, our goal here is to find out whether or not this guy actually is Santa Claus, and if we can complete his Santa costume regardless of whether or not he is. So let's go inside, and we'll check out this dream tomorrow on Let's Play Dual Hearts. See you then.